I've been asked to do a video about all the mods I've done on my Ender 2. So here goes. Let's start with the X Gantry. I found that sometimes the X Gantry becomes loose. You then have to tighten the two screws nuts in here. But if you're always mucking with mods, uh, say on the extruder, sometimes it becomes loose again. So what I did was uh, after tightening, I used Sugru to basically glue it together. If you're not familiar with Sugru, it's a moldable silicon glue that after setting, it becomes like hard rubber. You just need to make sure that you don't get any Sugru where the rollers go. Leave it for 24 hours for it to set. After doing this, I didn't have any more problems with the gantry becoming loose again. The Ender 2 doesn't come with a part cooling fan, so I reckon the uh, part cooling fan uh, should be one of the first things to, uh, to add. I'm currently using this hot end mod, which is good because it doesn't use the hot end screws, which I found have a tendency to loosen after a while. I'm using a 0.18 amp blower fan for part cooling. Note that uh, I also replaced the OEM fan with a Noctua 40 x 10 fan which is very very quiet. I've also replaced the motherboard cooling fan with a similar Noctua fan. The noisiest fan however is the uh, power supply fan. I've attached a uh, 60 by 25 Noctua fan to it uh, and it's pretty quiet. Um, note that I've got this cable around it. Um, what this cable does is uh, it reduces the um, speed of the fan, uh, therefore making it quieter. In the quest to keep the uh, printer as quiet as possible, I added uh, dampers to the stepper motors. One on the uh, x-axis motor and uh, the other one on the y. Okay, back to the hot end. I've replaced the hot end with a micro Swiss all metal hot end which allows you to print at much higher temperatures and also um, able to print with uh, abrasive ad, uh, filaments. For example, all these uh, gold colored um, parts that I have here are printed with a material called uh, PLA steel um, and a hardened or stainless steel nozzle is recommended. Um, Note that I'm using a uh, Capricorn PTFE uh, tube uh, which has a slightly smaller diameter and less friction. So both these points are great for printing flexible filaments um, and it also allows you to print at much higher temperatures. However, I'm not taking advantage of this because the, um, the PTFE tube doesn't go down far enough uh, into the cooling block. I've replaced the original extruder with a Macuan al uh, aluminium extruder. I was getting frustrated with the original because uh, sometimes the uh, filament gets stuck when you're feeding it through. This one is much nicer and um, it supports uh, flexible filaments. Uh, as you can see, it's got this um, um, guide um, just before and after uh, where the gear and the filament contacts. Um, okay, this part here, this blue part here, um, is one of my favorite mods. Um, it's a clamp, um, allows you to open and uh, tighten the gear. Um, therefore, you know, uh, freeing up one, one of your hands uh, when uh, handling filament. Um, you can also use it to, um, to adjust the alignment of the filament against the hole uh, uh, with ease. I'm using what is called the uh, Easy ABL kit by uh, TH3D Studio. Uh, they also supply a uh, replacement firmware. The tricky part is um, is doing the flashing. What you need to do is you need to flash uh, a bootloader uh, to the board. So I use a Arduino uh, to do this. After doing that, you can then upload and replace the um, original firmware. Uh, you will need to make some uh, configuration file changes. Uh, I think it's just to one uh, file uh, before you upload the firmware. Um, by the way, all this information is provided uh, in the TH3D Studios website. Okay, now let's talk about something that I think is fantastic, and that's uh, Octoprint. I'm using Octopi, which is a Linux image with uh, 
which has uh, Octoprint already um, installed uh, for the uh, Raspberry Pi um, and I'm using the uh, Raspberry Pi 3 um, the original intention was to uh, have this printer uh, you know, uh, set up and located in the garage and to be able to upload G-code files to it um, instead of having them to walk in and out to replace um, the SD card by connecting a camera to it uh, it can do uh, time lapse for you automatically. Uh, I'm actually using uh, two cameras here. Uh, one um, which is the Logitech C920 um, webcam, uh, and that's uh, mounted onto the X gantry, so it goes up and down with the um, X movements. Uh, and I've got a Mobius uh, camera here. Yeah, I'm using the Mobius uh, for um, live uh, video streams. Uh, basically for monitoring uh, the Logitech by default um, has aut auto focus turned on and this is very annoying because um, as your bed move uh, forward and backwards uh, the image uh, goes in and out of focus uh, but I've turned this off uh, via Linux um, you can also set uh, the focal length and uh, adjust the exposure. I've uh, reduced the exposure level. Um, um, on my Pi, you can see there are quite a few wires coming out of it. Um, now, three of these wires are for uh, two temperature probes. Uh, one of it uh, placed it inside the uh, control box. Uh, and the other one is, um, I've placed it up here um, in the... Um, next to the cooling block um, now uh, my reason uh, for placing it uh, with the cooling block is to uh, preamp uh, any heat uh, creep issues it displays uh, yeah all the temperatures are at the top here uh, you can see the two temperature which is the uh, hot end temperature you can see the bed temperature uh, you see the two temperatures for the um, the control box the, which is like uh, where the motherboard is and the uh, cooling block and the Raspberry Pi also has a um, its own uh, temperature um, sensor okay we have cameras we need lights right so um, I printed this uh, light bar uh, for the back uh, of the gantry but wasn't quite happy with it because um, you know the camera is in the front so we need the light to be at the front so I made this um, front mounted light bar um, so now I've got uh, you know a very even uh, light distribu distribution front and back so it's much better uh, I'm using RGB LEDs uh, this can be quite tricky to wire up and I'm not a um, you know um, electronics expert um, so I followed this article on uh, you know and supposedly the easy way to uh, wire it up so I bought this uh, RGB amplifier the LEDs are controlled using the LED strip control plugin uh, basically uh, you change the colors by sending um, G code command uh, which is M150 um, therefore um, I use Cura and in Cura I've, in my start and end G code scripts I've uh, added this uh, M150 commands so for example uh, when the printer is turned on uh, it's blue in color uh, then when it starts heating I think it's magenta and then when the hot end starts heating it's uh, red um, when it starts to uh, do the bed leveling uh, it's green and then when it starts printing uh, we just use a uh, white light I've also set my printer to speak using uh, Google Text to Speech API. Uh, this is not done via the I API. Sorry, this is not done via uh, Octoprint plugins, but via um, Octoprint events. Uh, so you can uh, create um, events. So, for example, um, if I detect the uh, print uh, start event, um, I'm sending. Um, it, it runs a script that makes a call to uh, the uh, Google Text to Speech uh, API uh, with the text print started. What we get back is an MP3 file, and so we play this uh, through the speaker. 
I think it's uh, pretty cool, but I think it's also pretty annoying. Uh, so I don't uh, normally plug a uh, speaker to the to the Pi. Okay, another set of wires from the Pi leads to the uh, filament sensor. So I made this um, attachment here to house the um, the sensor. Uh, so if no filament is detected, the uh, printing is paused, the nozzle is lifted, I think I've set it to 5mm and then uh, the print head moves to the corner. Uh, then you can uh, make a, you know, you can change the filament. Uh, when done, you go back to Octoprint and hit the resume uh, print button and the printing will resume where it left off. I've made a separate video uh, for this if you want, if you are interested. Okay, uh, on to another favorite of mine. Um, this is the uh, magnetic build plate. Yes, some people tell me that uh, you know you should just use glass. Well, sorry, I I love my magnetic build plate. I think it's great. It's been working uh, flawlessly. Um, I remove my prints normally if I'm sitting here uh, once it's finished. Yes, it might be hot, but uh, you know. My, it's fine, it's not too hot. Uh, I don't print uh, with ABS and actually at the moment with the magnets I can't print with um, ABS because um, this new Dymium magnets that I'm using, uh, they have a max uh, working temperature of uh, 80 degrees Celsius. Um, if you go over that, um, it will lose magnetism and it's not recoverable. Um, However, if I need to print ABS, I can just remove the magnets. They are just um, attached um, with double-sided tape. I can always reattach them later. Um, I've made a separate video uh, about this as well. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, check it out. I've also added these uh, belt tensioners, um, which uh, is a pretty um, popular mod. I use this um, TP-Link smart plug to turn the uh, printer uh, on and off uh, and I normally turn it on and off using uh, Octoprint. You can also control it using uh, the app uh, on a mobile phone um, and I use a different uh, smart plug to turn the Raspberry Pi on and off as well. Uh, to, re to access Octoprint remotely, there are a few options. For me, I just use uh, the Telegram plugin. Now, Telegram, if you're not familiar with it, is a uh, messaging app uh, similar to WhatsApp or WeChat you know, on the phone. Uh, with this uh, Octoprint plugin, you basically set up a bot uh, that lets you interact with the printer. Um, it can provide you with uh, you know status updates, uh, start, pause, stop print you know and many other commands um, it will send you a photo each time as well it, um, it it works great okay now for something that is actually not linked to the printer or um, octoprint um, but I use uh, and this is the uh, a force cam security camera you can control the orientation of the camera uh, remotely uh, up and down, left and right, you know, um, I think it does 360 degrees uh, but the beauty is you can actually uh, turn on the sound and listen to your printer and I think uh, that's very good because um, you can hear for things like uh, you know if the extruder is skipping so you know if I can hear that the, uh, it's going tuck 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 you know, um, it's probably best to just uh, cancel the print and turn off the printer all this is uh, done remotely so you could be out you know having coffee you could be shopping or whatever yeah I think that's I think pretty much all my mods at the moment um, if uh, if you have any questions uh, yeah just just ask in the comments below well and uh, if you like the video please uh, give it a thumbs up thanks for watching and uh, happy printing see ya